Hello, welcome to Butch's Building Blocks. I'm Butch. Today we're gonna to start a brand new cutting board. We're gonna call it Fire and Spice. Just to get out of the normal cutting board, the end grain things and all that stuff, we're gonna shake this baby up a little bit. Dug through my pile of exotic woods, finding some things that I thought would go good together. And here's what I ended up with. Slab of black walnut, a couple pieces of purple heart, hard maple, a little bit of bloodwood, some paduk, and a chunk of wenji. We're going to combine all of these woods into a nice looking color pattern, and then we're going to slice them up and reassemble them. Our first step in our fire and spice cutting board is going to be cutting these pieces to length, which is going to be 24 inches. And then we're going to cut them to width at about one and three quarters inches. We're not going to have everything the same size. We have different variants and stock thicknesses, which will add to the spectacular look of our fire and spice cutting board. These are the slabs of wood that we've cut up so far. I'm gonna play with this probably for the next 20 to 30 minutes till I can find something that looks reasonable. After I decide what I think looks reasonable so that you can see what crazy color pattern I've chosen. After playing with this for a good 20 minutes, moving pieces around, walking away, coming back, moving them around, walking away, coming back. I think I like this color scheme, knowing what the end result of the board is going to be. So we'll glue these up, and then I'll plane them down to make sure they're all the same size before we start our cuts. After glue up, I ran our stock through my planer to make sure that everything was smooth and then I had two parallel sides. Our next step is going to be ripping this board into random sized pieces and I've drawn some lines here indicating approximately where I want to cut them. These lines are at 22 and a half degrees which is set on my cross cut table. If you're wondering why 22 and a half degrees, because when you put 22 and a half and 22 and a half, it's 45 degrees, which means you can build 90 degree angles. I'm a professor, I teach math, so I'm kind of geeky about these things. I'll go and cut these into strips. Our one solid chunk of wood has now been split into eight sections. Eight only because I like even numbers. If you want to do more or less, it's fine. This is a random chaotic type pattern. And so it's really up to you to choose. Now, our next step is to take these pieces, flip flop them, turn them around, and put them back together like a puzzle until we get some design, some pattern that we like. I'll play with this. When I get one, we'll take a look at it. We'll try a couple and see which one stands out to us. Here's one pattern, not liking it at all. Let's try some more. This is another pattern that I've tried. I'm getting closer, but I'm not quite happy yet. Sometimes when things don't fit, you just have to make an adjustment. One more try. This could be our lucky pattern. I will have to admit there are a couple boards. These guys are off in thicknesses and widths by about a 32nd of an inch. 
So I ran them back through the table saw and trimmed them back up so they'd fit. Still need to play around with it, but I think we're getting really close. The pattern is starting to take form. I'm still not quite happy with it, so I'll play with it some more. Our fire and spice chaotic cutting board is turning out very well. We're at the stage where I need to glue it up. The glue up is going to be rather in tricky because of all the angles. These angles will have a tendency to slip past each other when pressure is applied to them. Not only that, I have this little chunk here which keeps falling off on me all the time. So I'll need to figure out how to support this little piece, get compressional force and yet not have my angle slide out to the sides. The ends of our chaotic cutting board are very zagzy. I'm going to trim these up and see them on that end too. But I'm going to be using my brand new constructed crosscut sled. As you can see here, while sanding the Paduk some of the residue oil and dust has gotten into my maple. I would suggest using mineral spirits to wipe those out so that you can keep your lighter colored woods next to your Purdue looking nice and clean. This is our fire and spice chaotic cutting board. It's now ready to have the oil applied to it. For this board, I'm going to use walrus oil, cutting board oil. It's got a little vitamin E and some other oils into it to help preserve our wood. Wow, look at that. You can already see the Paduke jumping out. The maple's nice and clear. Our purple heart is gaining a lot of color. There you have it. We'll let this soak in for two or three hours until it looks like it's all absorbed in. And then we'll put another coat of oil over top of it. After putting cutting board oil onto my boards. I like to put board butter onto it. You can use any type. I just happen to have this one on hand. Apply the board butter on and allow it to sit and rest and soak in. Now comes the time for buffing. Take your sock and swirl it around 10,000 times to get it there. Oh my gosh. That seems like way too much work. Take your sock, cut it all the way down till it opens up nice and flat. The inside has got that little fuzzy stuff. Take your random orbital sander and stick it on there. And now you have a buffing system. Now that we have our homemade buffer, let's polish this board up. All nice and polished up, and you didn't have to use a lot of elbow grease. Our chaotic fire and spice cutting board is completed. We've made all the cuts, we've glued, we've put it back together again. And I showed you a little trick on how to use your orbital sander as a polisher, just in case you haven't bought one of the crazy things yet. Which, by the way, I don't have yet. One of those things I want on my wish list. Anyways, here, is our cutting board. 
The colors have turned out fantastic. The edge grain gives it a very distinct look. And as you can see, there is a 22 and a half degree chamfer on the end, allowing people to get their fingers underneath of it. Beautiful cutting board, beautiful pattern. I hope I have given you enough information on how to build this board. If you find something that I didn't explain very well, please let me a comment. Ask me what it was I did or what I forgot to tell you and I will be more than happy to reply. Once again, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you really like something like this and you'd like to have this cutting board or another one made, please go to butchersbuildingblocks.com.